what is going on guys so i had a couple ideas i've been watching this channel called faster problems i've mentioned them before they do mostly gm uh vehicles but one of the things that i noticed is they do a lot of porting and uh this is what i this is what i originally did thinking that it was just about you know volume but realistically you know there, yeah, there's a debate about whether you want rough or smooth uh, on the intake manifold side, right? This kind of debate about golf, golf ball divots and all that stuff like that. Well, I'm not going to get into that debate too much, but I think we can all agree that this is not ideal. So we're going to go through this. We're going to go get all these edges off of uh, down here. So this is where the snorkel is. We're going to port this. We're going to smooth out all of this. And we're gonna extrude even more on this side. And then what we're gonna do, this is a terrible, sorry guys, I'm using my other phone just cause I dropped it, dropped the S20. And I don't really feel like using it without a screen protector while I'm messing around with this kind of stuff, but. And this is the second stage. So this is where we're gonna differ from most people. Most people will kind of smooth out their airbox and just kind of sand it down. We are actually going to fill this. So, we're gonna kind of mark off the area. You can kind of tell where the, the filter goes. I haven't really touched that part, but anything rough is gonna get smoothed down and then filled. So we're gonna to get to it. It's gonna be pretty interesting. I, uh, I've seen these guys do very similar stuff, but on the intake manifold. So they actually port the intake manifold and then they fill it with a type of resin. No, they're not using fiberglass resin. I'm using this because it's way cheaper and I don't need heat. Uh, I don't need to be heat resistant or or uh, take um, a lot of strength because it's in the air box. So we're going to use a fiberglass resin, fill in a lot of these uh, cracks and a lot of this rough stuff. And uh, it's actually not as bad as I remembered. I thought it was a lot worse, but it should be pretty easy to do. I think it's just literally going to get down to the point of like paint brush and uh, resin. And then once that's built up a bit, we can sand that down a lot easier. So. We'll see how it goes. I'm not really sure what I'm doing here, but I think it should be pretty fun. The other thing I'm gonna do is give the air filter a clean. I've done this once before and I kind of rushed through it. Uh, you're supposed to leave these things out for quite a while. So I don't think I actually oiled it properly. Um, so just give it a quick once over, go through the intake. I am gonna go up the line as the stuff cures and probably get into uh, cleaning the throttle body and the upper intake stuff too, but. So baby steps first, start with the stuff that takes the longest, right? So I'm gonna, I think you just give this couple, a couple sprays, wait a bit and then rinse it out, do it again and then uh, re-oil and let cure. So let's get to it. Okay, so we sprayed both sides pretty good. It says leave there for 10 minutes. So back in a few. And while we do that, we are gonna get started. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yeah, you guys are good boys. We are going to get started on porting this thing. And by porting it, I just mean really cleaning up the existing crop that I've already done to this. Um, like I said, when I went through, I was really, really focused on just volume and getting out the sound deadening. This is all gotta go. So we want this to be basically smooth. Um, all of this is gonna get ported out. Basically what I've been doing is I go on to used OEM parts. I've been looking at uh, GTR, R35 air boxes, and just kind of seeing what they're doing. And I think we can actually get pretty close. So the air box on a GTR is actually really similar to this, except the snorkel comes out here and it's a velocity stack. So what I'm thinking is, cause we already have uh, a bunch of really good cold air sources. Instead of trying to change the path, I just say we optimize it. First things first, I am gonna take the sensor out of this. Don't mind, uh, <laughs> don't mind this thing. This is, a, this is a mistake that I made way back. I um, thought that we could get cold air into the PC or the uh, yeah, PCV breather side from the air box, but it's definitely not metered yet. And it's definitely too much of just ambient air. It's, you need a, uh, like a flow of air to pull from. And that way it won't, it won't shit the bed, but it was a mistake, but I think that, uh, 
we could actually use that to maybe possibly ghetto fog the air box, seeing as it's past the filter. So could be fun. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I just got the GoPro out here, so I don't know how the audio is gonna be, but so what I'm gonna do is basically everything that's smooth, so this kind of little gap right here where the filter goes, that's gonna be left alone. And then we're gonna smooth out all of this leftover waffle pattern. And then we're also going to put, this is a really hard edge. In fact, it's like edge and then edge on this side too. Like, let's turn it around. So, I don't know why I ever left that in there. I don't know if you can see it, let's get some light. Yeah, right here, this edge. So we're gonna get all that out. And then we're gonna take the actual piece that's missing, it's inside, and uh, fuse that in there a little bit better. Or maybe actually fuse it in the car so that when this comes in, it can come in and out easily. But yeah, we'll get to that and then make this a nice smooth edge. I don't know if we'll do that with the uh, epoxy or actually get it smooth with the Dremel, but gotta get, gotta get Dremel down first, so let's get to it. Okay, so on further inspection, <clears throat> this actually isn't even required. So this is all gonna get smoothed out, the entire thing, because this lip actually just rests on here. As you can tell, I've already tried to epoxy that in the, in the past without really sanding anything. That's a new guy mistake, but we're gonna get this all smoothed out and get the airflow way, way more optimized. Cause this, you know, you, you do something and then you think it's good and then you learn a little something more <laughs> and you look back at your previous handiwork and you're like, what the hell was I thinking of? I think, um, yeah, all these like natural contours, we're gonna leave, but stuff like this and this, now that is crazy. That is a crazy hard lip. I can actually see that I've gone through. Uh, so we're pretty close to the edge here. So we, we won't be going that way, but we will be going this way. And I don't know how thick this is, but that's why we got the resin in case I go too far. Okay. So you can see that we actually burned through this side right here. So we're gonna build that side up with some resin. And I actually did go through this, uh, the first time I went through this, as you can tell, I was using a cutting tool. <laughs> so we'll build that side up as well. But um, really, we got all this out, so this whole edge, and I got a little bit more to go here. But I do notice that this is actually a step down. So what I'm thinking is I'm just gonna start burning through and just kind of smooth this out. And I might still have a bit of a lip, but what I'll do later is when I do the resin on this is I'll build this up a little here as well. And then I can start burning through that again. So this is gonna be really, really great. This is gonna be a lot of improvement. I'll, I'll do it before and after with the uh, footage already shot, but yeah, this is a massive, you know, it's probably 15, 20% more airflow going through there. So then we'll turn this thing around and we'll smooth out the edge so it's actually a smooth uh, transfer. And then we'll start hitting that waffle pattern. I am burning through bits, as you can tell. I'm just covered in crap here. Um, the best ones I'm using are these 80s. And the cutting wheels are just shredding immediately, so that's a little bit dangerous. We're not gonna be using those anymore. But I got lots of bits left over. I accidentally bought two of these when I first got it, so keep on going. Okay, so you can kind of see where I've left off. I got just about... This is about what I'm looking for. So it's still rough, obviously, but it's not like big chunks like this. So as air is gonna go over it, we're gonna have this nice kind of lip. I got all the hard edges off that, so that's nice and smooth. I'm um, gonna continue along the wall here. This seems like a lot because it is. It takes forever. You know, we're just at bits and we're just ripping through this stuff. But another thing I wanted to notice or uh, point out was the lip here. See if I can get the camera in here. So that lip right there is where the front intake comes off and that is a super hard edge. So what's gonna happen is as air is coming through here, there's gonna be a negative zone, negative pressure area, and it's gonna actually pull air. What you want is a really gradual taper. And you know, this is like an actual edge. Like it's actually, it comes up before it goes down. So we'll uh, contour all that, make it nice and smooth. Let's go. 
All right, so I actually got a really good edge on this. I don't think we're gonna go too much farther and we didn't bust through the edge, so no epoxy required. And let's see what I can see here. Yeah, that's a really nice saber. So there is a little bit of a lip on this edge and I could probably smooth that out a bit. Oh yeah, I could definitely smooth that out a bit. But um, yeah, way, way better. Way smoother, no lip. And also I was even noticing on this part, cause this actually is two pieces of plastic. You can see where it's kind of fused right here. But right along here, I've already hit it with a bit of sand here, but you can see right over on this edge. All right, so just take your fingernail and just run it along. And anything your fingernail can get caught on, on both ways, going this way and that way, we're gonna sand it down and make it smooth. Oh yeah, there's a bunch on this edge too. Anyways. Okay, so I just wanna show a quick thing. We're getting through it pretty good, but these thicker pieces of the waffle, use a cutter tool and hit it from the angle and you can get so much more material out. Just be careful that you don't go too far like sideways, you won't be pushing against it. And also if you are using, I mean really for any of this stuff, if you're using a Dremel, use safety glasses, you know, don't skip it. You know, just picture yourself going to the hospital with a giant chunk of plastic in your eye thinking, damn, why didn't I wear glasses? So if you don't have safety glasses, get the most transparent pair of sunglasses. Anything is better than nothing, but you know, don't use safety squints because as you can tell, this shit gets everywhere and it's hot and it's coming off here at about 18,000 RPM. So don't mess around. Um, as you can see, I don't know if you can kind of tell, I don't want to move my hand because there's not much room here. But um, down here, along there is where we're going through. So you can see it's not going to be perfectly smooth, but the idea is that it will have a more surface area to adhere to and the resin will make it nice and smooth. So we're gonna keep going at this waffle pattern and uh, yeah, it should be good. Okay, so uh, yeah, like like all things that are like this, uh, three hours later and we haven't even poured the resin yet. So I am gonna get everything out as far as extrusion. I think the extra uh, volume will help. But yeah, this takes forever. So just gonna keep grinding at it. I got most of the lips down, but I just wanna get the rest of this waffle out and then we're gonna pour it. All right. Okay, so we got everything. You know, there's still definitely room, but like I said, we're not trying to get this flat because that's what the resin's for. But I did have to go somewhat like over here, this little edge had to get kind of honed out. And as you can see, I didn't go too much farther up here just because I literally can't reach in with this uh, Dremel. So that'll have to, it's not too bad because the uh, that structure actually is what holds the filter. And so I can't even cut this part off, but I kind of want to get up a bit more here, but I literally can't turn the tool in. And if I do, I'm just, I'm just grinding, I'm just snapping wheels, so. We're gonna mix up this resin and we're gonna do the bottom side first just so I can get some of that down and we'll see how that works. I think it's gonna be kind of a tipping tipping deal more than anything. Uh, maybe I will do this side first actually. Okay, I might go through this in a little bit more with just getting it cleaned up. Seeing a little bit of residue here. Anyways, get to it. Get this resin mixed up. Okay, so this is actually gonna be pretty cool. As you can see, we're getting a great, great spread. Uh, this stuff is a lot more liquid than I thought it was. Um, I'm trying to get the measurements right and I might have, I don't know how quickly this stuff dries. Um, my only tip would be pour less and you won't have to manage it as much. But it looks like it's going kind of where I want it to go. I'm thinking probably tear up the tape when it's like tack. And uh, that way it won't rip off from the uh, the rest of it. And we'll get like a nice kind of strip pattern. Uh, I'm gonna pour the rest. And when I mean a rest, I mean a tiny bit because this stuff does kind of pour pretty uh, far. 
Like it's, it's, we're getting a lot of coverage for the mount that I used, but uh, we're gonna get the whole thing covered and it's gonna be smooth. I mean, look at this. I'll just get my hand in there without getting it wet. I don't know if I can see that. Yeah, like look at that. So when that dries, it's gonna be like, we won't even really have to do much sanding. Right, I'll go over this with a polisher, really, really fine polish and get it uh, nice and smooth, but this is awesome. I, uh, I'm really glad I did this. Okay, let's get the more coverage and uh, keeps kind of just, I, I just, I'm just kind of like tipping it around and just kind of uh, keeping it from going out all the holes. But I did put a little bandaid on the hole that I do want to cover. I forgot to get actual fiberglass gauze. So that's kind of a fail, but uh, I'm just gonna kind of keep patching this up and then uh, hopefully it dries around that and I can just peel this bandaid off. We got a little, Coverage, if not, I can always come back and put a small patch, but not too worried. Look at that. Perfect little strip for the uh, air filter. And uh, look how good that came out, man. No more waffle. Look at the bottom here. All of that rough, that crazy edge that would dip down. That's now a nice smooth progression. Even on this side, I don't want to touch it, but this side just kind of dips down. And uh, I just pooled up the um, resin and then tilted it towards myself. So it just all pooled into that side and then I just tilted it back. So it's actually like evenly spread on its own, just gravity. And then look at the, uh, yeah, look how good that came out. That is going to be so easy to buff into something really smooth. It's going to be awesome. So yeah, if you look really close, we're actually gonna have to sand this down. Uh, can't really get in there without risking dropping the camera on fresh glue, but I mean, you can kind of see it. Anyways, that side, this side, was pulling up, uh, and if I, I think if I left that in any longer, that definitely would have, uh, definitely would have um, been been a bit of an issue. So um, I'm gonna probably bring this inside and let it dry, and then I might actually do another coat on uh on this side where the actual uh, waffle still is so i think on that side this i can all just sand that down that looks fine we have a lot more room look at all this more space so we much do aerobics in here so many activities do step class it's making my head spin how many activities we can do so should be good oh, that worked out a lot better than i thought the next day what's going on guys it is a beautiful day got my buddy here helping me out gonna make this airbox rip aren't we oh yeah good boy yeah so anyways just let it cure overnight by the fire so it gets uh fully cured i already started sanding and then i remembered hey so let's be recording us so <laughs> when got the camera Dude, this came, I'm so happy, man. This is so smooth. It's crazy how smooth it is. So I do have some really soft sandpaper. I only bought 800. This is actually 400. Is it? Yeah, it's 400. But uh, I got some 1,000 and 2,000. So we'll get this nice and smoothed out. Got some buffing tools here. Um, just gonna go over real, real, real. Real easy, I don't want to be flaking anything. I got really good adhesion on the sides here, like this, when you look at the, uh, on the sides here, like the actual fall off, it like naturally, with gravity, it just smooths itself out. So I don't even have to sand this. This is a really nice natural edge. It's kind of rough on this side, but regardless. Gonna pour that out, make that a nice smooth hole, possibly dremel the rest of this crap off. This is from the last, attempt and uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep this in the car like attached permanently to the car or permanently attached to the airbox if it's permanently attached to the airbox it's kind of hard to get out but keep ripping on this and uh, get it in the car by today just make sure all the flakes and all this kind of stuff that are hanging off are uh, cleaned up and good to go but yeah it turned out amazing really really happy uh, I think I did mix up my proportions because this is probably about a third full <laughs> and I used all the hardener so 
hopefully that doesn't mess with the stability of this stuff. I think if anything, it should help us um, keep a nice rigid, rigid frame, but yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get sanding. We're gonna get sanding. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so going through the snorkel and looking at the little holes that we repaired and it worked perfectly. So on the previous video, I, or previous clip that you'll be watching in this video, I put a band-aid over this and just filled it on the inside just so it had somewhere to adhere. And it actually worked perfectly. So you can kind of see the little hole there. Yeah, a little one right here. And that should be fine. It's not, it's not like it's a high velocity zone or anything like that. So nice little repair and it's really smooth. I just dremeled out the kind of blobs and this is a really nice gradual. There's really nothing, might be a little bit of a lip there, but a little bit more sanding and uh, this will be really optimized. Right, there seems to be a giant lip here. And now you can just go straight down and it's even smooth onto the inside, right? So no more negative pressure zones. A little bit more of a gap here because of this. And I don't know, I don't have any more hardener, so I think I'm gonna leave it like that. It actually did kind of naturally blob, so it's not super smooth, but it's good enough. This isn't a main source of air, so I'm not super, super duper concerned, but yeah, big improvement over, uh, over stock. Okay, so just cleaning up the dust and doing kind of a final inspection. Um, I think I'm pretty much done. That is looking really good. All the like bevels and contours, like all, whenever it changes direction, I mean, we're not perfectly smooth, but I wasn't really trying to get it perfectly smooth. Just trying to avoid the real rough stuff and hard edges, which I don't feel a single one. Even up here where this is really bad. This is nice and smooth now. All right, I'm just gonna keep washing this thing out and then we'll uh, dry it off and uh, put it back together. I might have to do a little bit of touch up stuff where the filter goes, just so it makes a good seal, but I think we're good here. I was gonna fill in all these little holes and stuff, but like I said, I ran out of hardener. So let's keep at it. Okay, so we got everything back together. Just did a real basic oil re-oiling of the K&N. &N. And while it doesn't look like it's really perfectly smooth, and by, is, by any means it's not, um, the real point of this was to pick up any you know any turbulence that we we're getting on the main so this is i would consider this the main um yeah the main sources of air had large lips so realistically if you want to redo this if you want to emulate this mod you don't have to use the epoxy if you're if you're worried about that or you're, if you're nervous or it's too much of an undertaking you don't need to do that um if you wanted to just sand this down you would have to go way way lower in rpm so 5,000 RPM on a Dremel tool is way too fast. You're gonna melt plastic. So if you wanna do what I did and you don't wanna use plastic or you don't wanna use epoxy, find yourself some, you know, a nice gradual of 400 to 1,000 and just go at it with there. But epoxy is not needed if you wanna replicate this. I know it's a bit, it's a bit overboard, but yeah. I, I had gone too far and uh, to, to get those results that I've got, you would have to use something like an epoxy or something just to kind of level it out. <clears throat> but anyways, let's uh, put it back in the car. Okay, so I just went for a little test drive and just kind of inspecting the filter just to see if I am uh, getting any oil over it. And I think I got away without doing any damage, but it's definitely, uh, probably could have done it with probably 10% less oil, but I don't really see anything too bad. Oh yeah, there is some, oh no. <laughs> okay. Yikes. Okay, well I'll get, I'll get a cloth and clean out any excess, but I'm not too worried. But the, uh, looking on the inside here, this is fantastic. Look how smooth this is. With the uh, snorkel on, it's gonna be perfect. Oh, I'm so happy. This is awesome. I mean, this doesn't look smooth, but it really is. Like oh. Several days later. What's going on, guys? So, it is the next day after doing the airbox. And I, I realized that I didn't really film an outro or kind of like a resolution to this. Excuse me, sir. It's a giant moth in my car. Um, so... 
I had to run this out. And this is the M45 ECU that I used and bricked. It has the Uprev license on it still, and it is bricked. So about two months ago, I paid for the ECU recovery. And for some reason, I thought it came with the shipping label. It didn't. Uh, and in the meantime, I just kind of forgot about it. So going to go run this down to FedEx, grab a couple things for the dogs, and do a bit of a rant and review of the airbox. Uh, I did mention it earlier. I, I don't know if I included that clip, but I mentioned it earlier um, about how it felt in the lower RPMs and a bit of the gains that I felt. And uh, it's kind of hard to say. Um, like I said, this wasn't going to make some drastic improvement, but just seeing that, you know, in the way that it was, uh, bugged me. So let's fire this thing up. Back in on, I'm back on 94 now, so just, I'm trying to eliminate a few issues. I do have some, this weird power issue. That was a rough one. And I'm not sure if it's pump related or if it's something in the tune or like what's going on here. But uh, basically what happens is I have a while where the car runs at full power. It feels way, way stronger. And then, so for whatever reason, the power falls off and it runs about uh, a, a full point richer. So I'm trying to target 12.3, right? It starts at 12.4 and kind of works its way down to 12.0 to one air fuel. But for some reason, whenever this, this event triggers it, it will be around 11 and then taper off to like 10. And it feels like it's down on timing too. So I have a few theories about why that is. Uh, it could be something that uh, I'm doing to the car with ethanol, in which case that's why I'm back off of it onto 94. Um, I mean, it's still got a little bit residuals in the tank, but I filled up on 94, so it should be dilute. Um, what else? Uh, there could be something with the um, throttle body. And there was another issue where I thought that the air box was slowing down air and it just threw it off for some reason. So I ruled, I'm ruling these things out um, bit by bit because I do want to make bigger changes in the car, especially with the headers going in, ECU coming back on, right? So I want this thing in tip top shape. So let this thing warm up a bit and then we'll go for a cruise and just kind of get into it a little bit and just see how it feels. It's not a very far drive. So, you know, I'm gonna basically do it all in one and just see where we are as far as uh, the fueling and, and just how it feels. But I did do a bit of driving yesterday and it felt like the dead spots around the 700, 800 RPM. Like basically once you're, when you're stopped and you accelerate um, that kind of like you're, you're pushing the pedal in and you're not really getting anything, right? So there was a few dead spots that definitely felt better. Um, the weather is changing so much that it's really hard to kind of pin down one one thing or another, right? I think there's a lot of different, uh, different factors at play here, but uh, we'll, we'll get after it. We'll get, we'll get this thing sorted out. Um, I'm gonna go on a bit of a rant here about the ECU. So the ECU, um, I am kind of thinking about getting it restored. So I'm gonna send it back. Um, and uh, we get this thing restored by Uprev and then they'll send it back to me. I don't know if the license is on it or if it's separate and they send me the file to flash it. Either way, I'm going to kind of pursue getting the license back off the ECU and onto the um, cable. So that's how their cable management works. Um, and I'm basically thinking I might switch to a different ECU. So there is the FX45 ECU, which you can um, swap over and it will work. There are some downsides, so I'll get into those. So the downsides and upsides of the 03 M45 is you can control the transmission. So the transmission on the 03 M45 is the same. I'm guessing the TCM location is the same. So when it um, when you affect torque management tables, it will actually change the shift pattern and shift points. Not the shift points rather, but the actual um, line pressure is affected by torque management. Um, the downsides are pretty heavy. So you're down to one map. It takes about 20 minutes to flash. And during that time, you're open to stability issues like me, right? Breaking the ECU, um, having the... Uh, 
having the computer crash while you're flashing is uh, is much greater when you have that that long of a uh, gotta get out of here now. The uh, there's a lot there's a lot greater chance of breaking the ECU. So um, also yeah, so the newer cell ECU I'm pretty sure requires either a throttle body or just O2 sensors up front, which actually isn't a bad idea. I kind of like the idea of running a wideband in the factory location. It's kind of a cool idea. It, so there's money to be spent, but I think that the the benefits outweigh the, the negative. It's a newer ECU too, so more memory. That means that we can flash a ROM in like a minute, you know, not even sometimes. Um, you can cycle maps with the uh, cruise control button, so it'd be kind of cool because I actually don't have cruise control, so get to use a button that I, I don't really use. Um, five different maps would be fantastic. We could get this thing, you know, an, an E20 tune or something. Um, kind of cool, man. There's definitely some upsides for the newer ECU, but keeping it just the way it is and not buying more hardware and not putting more parts into it. I'm not really seeing a real benefit. There is a few things that are tempting to put this thing back in, which is, you know, obviously the ability to fine tune again, go back to where we were uh, left off. And also there's new, um, new stuff with the throttle body. So without the up rev math for the P, oh God, what is it? P900 to P903, it's the same ROM, but the updated version. The P903 ROM now has support for up rev throttle which would be pretty cool. That would definitely shave off some time off the, the 60 foots. It allows you to go wide open much, much sooner. So definitely benefits to have, to be had there. Um, so yeah, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, if I include this clip, let me know what you think. Should I stick with the older ECU and, and put it back in the car? Should I keep the older ECU and just put it on the bench and just keep working on the stock ECU right now? Or should I buy a new ECU off of a newer FX or M? I'm not sure about the M, but a newer FX for sure will work. Uh, so I could buy the new ECU and flash that and start going down that hole, down that rabbit hole. All right. So the ECU is shipped. Should be there by the end of March. Yeah, so basically the car runs really well, the stock ECU, um, as is, but I think if we start really making bigger changes, I was talking to um, a guy that I, I mentioned in the LED headlight video, and he was saying that he's going to a standalone, so that's kind of why I'm thinking of, uh, of switching. And the thing about a standalone is, like, you're on your own. Like, <laughs> you really are kind of... It's the final plunge, right? But the thing is, is, if you have good tuners, and I have amazing tuners locally, and if it's a platform that they can tune, you know, we might be able to get a lot more uh, out of these cars, right? A lot of the torque management, safety stuff that's in them, I don't really know how invasive that is on these ECUs. I haven't really de dove into that part, but it's definitely something that I think uh, you wouldn't want when you're supercharging or turbocharging these cars. Oh yeah, you can feel the airbox. It's actually got a bit of a drone now. You can't hear it. I don't know if it picks up on camera, but yeah, it feels good. It's definitely the um, that like 800, like idle to 1200 range that you feel it. Like I. It, I'm trying to explain, I'm, uh, I'm trying to think of a good way to explain this. The best way to put it is I don't have to put my foot uh, as far into the accelerator to get a RPM reaction, if that makes any sense. Like that like little like hesitance spot where you're, you're starting to increase RPMs, um, that is a much more sensitive feeling now, if that makes any sense. The, uh, the throttle. jump out here and floor it but I will wait what was I gonna say 
some other things about the car. So, I'm basically gonna wait one more paycheck and then I'm gonna reach out to this shop called MDA Fabrication. And they're a really, really high level shop. And the reason why I'm reaching out to them is because the previous shop isn't really responding to my emails anymore. And it's nothing against them. I honestly believe that they're just that busy. So I'm gonna just reach out to MDA. Uh, I've got a friend who knows uh, one of the main guys there. So, and he says that they're really, really good. And this is their, they're kind of their specialty, right? Is kind of one-off or kind of obscure. You know, this isn't really the bolt up uh, solution that most people use. This is kind of, we're, we're really kind of diving into the deep end here, so. Yeah, it definitely picks up. Feels fantastic. Honestly, it feels really, 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 really good. I'm pretty happy with that air box. Um, I think air speed is something that often gets looked over. We're always talking about, you know, making things bigger or more volume, more this, but realistically velocity um, was something that the Nissan engineers really were paying attention to. And I think a lot of these aftermarket intakes, we see people going up to 3.5, four inch intakes. And it's like, you gotta think about the airspeed in the middle of that on the sides. Like, are we speeding things up or are we just the ability to consume? And, you know, I think all of these mods would work really well if you had forced induction where volume really is what you're trying to get, right? You're trying to get as much air in and out and velocity isn't such a big deal, but, um, the uh, NA route for a VK really depends on velocity. And I don't think that's exclusive to V8s or a VKs rather, I think that's a, uh, I think that's a small displacement V8 issue, right? The LT1, all these motors that didn't really have a optimized intake, what did they do, right? Did they go bigger intake? No, they did almost a, I mean, technically a smaller intake, higher velocity, and they picked up a ton of power up top. So there's definitely some, there's definitely some NA voodoo to be had. I'm gonna call it there. I appreciate it, you guys. I'm gonna go inside and edit this into the rest of the video. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm, yeah, I will. I'll include some of the draggies. Oh, wow, this is my girlfriend. Dog. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm making a video. <laughs>